Welcome back everyone. This is day three and what I want to do today is finish the framing. I've got to put in the um, the flat stud that was in here. Put that back in. That should finish up this side. Probably run a few more screws in this. I don't know what kind of setup this is here but kind of loose so we're going to be putting some screws in tighten this up. And on this other wall, I want to add probably a stud up through there, maybe some bridging across, maybe at the base of some bridging so that we got something to attach the base to. And that looks like about it. And then I want to install the shower. So we're going to start off with a pan and I'll check to make sure it's a level. This house is pretty rugged. The main carrier beams right here. And they're 2 by 10 floor joists. we got two layers of plywood. So the old shower unit was in level. Plum, square. So I think we're in good shape on this one. I'll get opening the boxes up and bring in the parts. And it is a caulkless type unit. And it's mortarless. So we don't have to put any mortar on the base. So it should be fairly fast install. Cross your fingers. Let's get started. Okay, I got this flat stud back in there, tightly secured. I could grab this grab bar before and it'd wiggle. There's no movement now. And so that's nice and tight. We're square around here. Everything's got a corner. We come around here. I put a base plate in. I put a stud in. That goes up to here. Um... I'm going to leave these shims on for now. I may have to cut them off depending on the height and then make up my own. And the shower head is secure. It's got that third screw and extra screws in it now. So that's nice and tight. This extra stud is going to help us give an attachment to the shower. It also gives me a place to secure my pipe that's on there. Um, it's flexible enough. I should be able to square this up no problem to the shower and it's accessible through this opening so i like that the floor should be fine it's it's a little larger than normal but i'll get the shower in here remember they have a great big base on them so i think that's going to be fine all this corner wall stud is fine here on this edge so we're ready to install the shower well the only thing i want to do i guess is i'll come across here clean up this caulking I might cut this linoleum back or make sure that the floor is level across there it looks pretty level but clean that up a little bit get the vacuum out get this all vacuumed to bring the shower base in all right it's finally time to go get the shower base I got everything cleaned out all the cobwebs out of here this little right will be back works great portable little wet dry that my big 16 footer hardly fits through this door or 16 gallon it's only like a 24 inch door and it doesn't scratch it always coming down um so i'm gonna go out and open up make sure the uh the shower base and the surround are in awesome shape sometimes they come with abuse on the box and they're beat up this box looked great so clean up my mess head out get my parts and let's test it out well, I came out in the living room. There's a little more room here, um, even though I moved a bunch of items from the bathroom out here. But here's our shower floor pan, and it looks in nice shape. No damage on it. The base 
has got an attached plastic webbing every one inch. So this is designed for, you know, substantial amount of weight in it without any issues. Um, they say it's a no mortar install like the old tub was, but they do say you can go ahead and put a little silicone or adhesive on it. And that probably what it does is keeps it from creaking and moving around because it can't lift up or anything. And then we still have to drill and attach it to the studs. So I'll probably do that. But right now I want to do the drain. I slap some, I got a brass two inch drain here. I slap some plumber's putty on, which I always use too much and it gets messy. But uh, we got a brass, a brass ring. We got a rubber washer and a cardboard washer. So the rubber goes up against the base and the uh, cardboard and the brass nut. And then tighten this up, keep it centered in the opening. It always oozes out. I always use too much plumber's putty. End up getting rid of most of it. And then looks good centered. So now I've got the big old pliers. It's not going to fit in there great because they don't give you a lot of room here. But let's tighten this up. Hopefully I won't tip the unit over here. I could do this at a later date uh, by working up under the floor joist and it makes it hard to get the big pliers up in there. But I've done it. They have these in plastic, which are half the price, but I don't like torquing on the plastic ones, so I always buy the brass and crank these babies down. There's also the glue in type. You put your two inch pipe up in there and glue it on, but I don't like that style either. You got a one shot. This is a compression style. You got that rubber ring and your pipe fits in, you clamp. I find this a little easier to work with. We'll keep cranking until she's got tension on her. This is the first time I used one of these Delta units. I usually use a, a Sterling Vicrel and the webbing is farther apart. And it's a one piece, this is a two piece. Um, these are probably three quarters of an inch. So hopefully this is nice and strong, good quality. All right, let's see how much goobered out. Quite a lot. I just want to make sure it's centered in there and it looks good. Try not to be too messy, right? It looks really centered. It looks like it could go a little tighter. And the problem with getting it tighter is uh, normally they give you a big opening here. This isn't too large to get monster pliers in there. I think they make a tool to fit on these collars, but I don't think I'm going to buy one. Yeah, she's still tightening. I want to mush out as much of that plumber's putty as possible. Get this snug. That's what that cardboard washer is for. So it doesn't wrinkle up your gasket. You got a rubber gasket to seal and you got the plumber's putty. So two things there. I've seen people use caulk. I don't really want to use 
this caulk, like silicone on it. I think I'm about tight. I don't want to get crazy, crazy here. Mm, that looks good. Get my mess cleaned up. We'll see how much goobered out over here. Oh, a lot more. So that's good. I want this to look sharp. It'll be seated all the way down. And I'll clean this again once I get the water running in there. So that looks halfway decent. So we'll carry it in. It's centered all the way around. It's, we'll carry it in there and, and set it. Okay, got her in here. Let's see if it fits now, right? Sure, clears our faucet. I'm hoping it lines up good on our floor. I don't have to do any flooring work. And then Looks like we got a half inch in front of our flooring here, which is good. I probably could shim it off the wall because they have quarter inch Luan up there. They've got half inch plywood on this side, quarter inch Luan there. So I probably could bring it forward to the flooring and then I could just do a, uh, a white PVC quarter round and glue it in place. So that'll look good. Our drain looks good. Obviously in the right spot. If I shift this out to the flooring and then back it up about maybe a quarter of an inch because all these types of flooring need expansion. That should work fine. And see we only have a quarter inch back there. So I can cut some Luan pieces and Put them in there or I can put the shims in either or so that looks great let me grab the level and see how close it is and then hopefully it's exact to mundo that's exact to mundo and then what do we got this way beautiful Beautiful and beautiful. So I've done quite a few jobs on this house and it's pretty plumb square level. It was built pretty good, foundation's nice. So the house doesn't shift. An old home, you've seen me do one, an old home where you've got a three inch difference in the floor. Um, so let me get some shims and I'll shim it out and then I'll drill through with the base and attach it with screws and I also want to walk in it listen see that there's no shifting up and down squeaking some of the old tub and shower units had a piece of cheesecloth type stuff you lay in the bottom keep the squeaking down plastic against the floor um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably put a little caulk. I've got some uh, GSL construction adhesive. I'll put a dab, probably, I don't know, six dabs in there. But prior, I want to get my shims going. I want to even this out. All right, I'm going to lift this up. going to put some dabs of caulking on it. And that'll help the base from... We did, I guess. I don't know where I'm going to go. But we'll do that. And the main, probably, you know, six or eight dabs. 
got some GSL here, might work. And just basically glue it. And put a little dollop a few different spots. Maybe on these feet, you know, like that. I took the tip right off the end of this. And then, I don't know, just something back here. Just to please the instructions here, I don't, I don't know if it's probably necessary, but. Tubes ought to have something like this. They don't harden, then you gotta choke them. So let's lay this back down, get it where I want it. Hopefully, not make too much of a goober mess. Get it just about right first. a quarter inch from the front. I'll measure it before I step on it. Looks like it's got a shift to the right, just a whisker. Yeah, just a whisker. So it's even like that. We are a heavy quarter. No caulk got on the floor. The expansion gap is fine. So I'll stand in it. If you're using mortar, what you have to do is, or you should do, is mortar it down, walk on it, maybe put a bucket or two of weed in it, and then leave for the day, come back the next day so it doesn't shift around. But this one, I'm going to still attach it to the wall. I hate to put screws into the lip. I prefer the style that has the clip, metal clip over like what was on the tub and then you put a screw up here. But uh, I'll check the directs again. But that's what they want you to put one in each stud. It's a little overkill. You got to keep them up high enough that you don't get any possible water. But we won't. All right, so let me go check them quick. Now I'll grab a drill bit, get some screws. I'll probably put some some uh, ceramic coated screws in. They won't rust. Check this out, guys. Walking through the hallway here, and I see this uh, Purple Heart Award for 1968, January. And uh, that's pretty cool. I covered up his name so for privacy, but that's quite an award here. Okay, we got the base screwed on. It's set up for about an hour. Had my lunch. I'm back. I furred out the walls so they're plumb. The shims are all plumb all the way up. I'm going to place the back wall on. And I marked out where that one stud is because I want to put a grab bar here in the center. So I should be able to get right into, you know, a stud with that. And they got tape on this. So you got a, a sticky tape that goes around and covers up your screw heads. So I got to clean the dust off that and um, put the tape on. Then I can go ahead and put the back wall on, make sure it's plumb. Yeah, I got my one inch wide tape over the head of the screws. It's a foam tape. There's a backer right there. You peel and stick behind the faucet. And then you cut out with a knife. And then uh, 
we got I'm got there's not room to set a tripod up in here with this this wall in here so uh I'm gonna set this in place and check it for plumb and then screw it to the studs well that went in pretty sweet so now I'm gonna get the left end I can go ahead and put this on and then the right end will do last all right it's tight in here but I brought in the uh the left end and you see the way these hook is I got the flange at the top and then these have an interlock so you bring it in on an angle get it locked behind the back set it up on the base make sure you get it in there Together as a unit there. All right, we got the left end in. It's all shim plum level. It snaps kind of hard into them corners, but it's even. The gap is the same. The reveal. Now we're going to start on this harder end. We're going to do some measuring. I'll bring in the side. We'll see where the faucet's going to line up, and we'll drill a hole. Okay. Where this mounts, it's going to be against the studs. It's flush with this edge. I checked. The faucet will adjust, go back, and be level. So that's perfect. I do not have the jigsaw with me. I do have a dryer hole saw with me. The escutcheon plate is about six inches. This is about four and a quarter. So this is what I'm using. And this should work out pretty good. And I'm not sure if I want to do it right here. I'm going to have to vacuum this up. There, I just want it stationary here. Well, that looks pretty good. Sometimes when I do plastic, I'll put it in reverse so it doesn't bite in. Well, let's see how this does in low. Clutches on. Oh, wants to walk a little bit. I'm doing it from the back side. Put it up on high and control it here. trying to go fast. It's not wood. Uh oh, got a little battery. I haven't charged these batteries in a week. Grab one out of this drill. These are four ampers. I think it's four, yeah, this one's a four. Glance at the other side. Just about coming through. heats up and it wants to weld to our tip. So there we go. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. I'll get my knife and get these burrs off. So from the front of the unit, it's nice and clean cut. And then this sticky felt pad goes on there. 
centered over the hole. And then we'll take a utility knife and cut the circle out. Well, that went in better than the other side. Looks really good. Went against the shims. Our faucet looks great. Right in the center. The shower's coming together nicely. Now what I have to do is uh, clean up my mess. Got a lot of stuff in here. Wipe this all down, get it cleaned up. It's got, you know, plastic. It's like a magnetic attraction to dust. And then uh, I'm going to work on that faucet if I get time. I know we got that storm coming here. I'm going to check the radar and see how close that is. Because I want to get my snow plow back on the tractor tonight beforehand, not be out in the snowbank doing it. And then um, I want to see when the freezing rain's coming because I don't want to be out in that. So I was hoping to get that faucet together, put the cartridge in, put the escutcheon plate on, tighten that up, get the handle set, turn on the water. But I'm not sure it's that important. I think um, I can let this ride, get this cleaned up, get my tools picked up, see what kind of time in the day I got left. But it's looking good. We got our drain in. We don't have the um, trap assembly hooked up yet, but the drain's installed. Our hole went nice uh, as far as the faucet. We went against our studs. Just looks great, guys. Um, to finish this off, I'm going to be cutting drywall and mudding it in there so it looks like it's always been there. I did mark the back of the shower here. I want to put a grab bar right here. The one that they had in there, it's got soap scum and missing screws and not, I don't know if it had a scunching cover on it even. So I'm not sure I want to use that. I might tell them I need to buy a new one because I don't want any water to be able to leak down behind it and I don't want it looking ugly. So um, I might be looking for another grab bar. And uh, yeah, I think we had a productive day. I'm just going to clean up my mess, get this vacuumed, picked up, get my... Uh, parts around, check my material list and see how far I can go today. All right, I vacuumed up here and there's a little bit of magnetic dust on the shower unit, but it looks pretty good in here. Nice and bright. I'm gonna work on the faucet next, but I may be out of time. I may have to come back for another video and finish. We'd have to assemble the faucet, test it, and then poke the drain up obviously first and then uh, do the shower head and spout. But we have to do the wall around here, patch it in, make things look beautiful. The uh, the Wayne's cutting doesn't reach. So I probably have to take this grab bar off. Probably should take it off, do a nice job here anyway. And then uh, what, what I ought to do probably is take this grab bar and mount it inside the shower. And then by reuse the old one out here where who cares if it's got a screw in it. This has the escutcheon cover and the proper screws. But I have to buy a little more wainscoting and finish it to the end because that just doesn't look right. I got to do something with a baseboard. Got a colonial base. And uh, molding down the front. Then I got to pick up the shower doors. I ordered them. They take a week, they say. Hopefully only a week. By then I should have this pretty much buttoned up. It'd be nice to come in here and I may paint the ceiling too because it'll look dingy if I don't paint the ceiling and then paint the walls and do all that before I mount the shower doors and probably put the shower head on. That'll give me a lot more room to work. And But I have to work on the shower drain, the faucet, and I could at least put a plug up there maybe so I can test things. But uh, I just want to make sure nothing's going to leak before I button up the walls and the ceiling down below.